Hello everyone, it's Rebecca here. I hope you're all doing well. Today I thought I would share with you some of the books from Arc August and how I'm doing. So, hmm, interesting. So we're now smack bang in the middle of August when I'm filming this. It is the 15th of August. I've been on holiday for a week and I've read a few things and I thought I would share with you the, the arcs in particular that I've read or started or want to read for the rest of the month because obviously it is Arc August. For those of you who don't know, Arc August is run by Shelley and Octavia from Readsley Repeat. If I remember, I will leave a link to all that good stuff down there, but it was mentioned in my announcement post, which again, I will link down below or up above if I remember. We, let's be real, we know I won't remember. So yes, so far I have read, I read one arc early because I just couldn't wait. So, so far I've read two arcs. Two arcs? Yes. I've completed two arcs and I'm in the middle of another two. So I'm just going to go into the ones that I have already read. Um, two of those are graphic novels and I am also including the first one that I read before Arc August actually began in this as well because I enjoyed it so, so much. The one that I couldn't wait to get to was Mooncakes, which is a graphic novel. I actually don't have an image because I'm recording on my phone and I don't have my iPad on me, so I can't put an image up of Mooncakes. Um, it's a graphic novel and I can't remember who it's by, but a lot of people got arcs of this at BA and BookCon and when I seen that it was available to read now on NetGalley, just so you know, NetGalley is a little gem for read nows right now for graphic novels. I would highly recommend if you don't have an account, go sign up, download that one on read now, review it, love it and start your NetGalley journey. Mooncakes follows the story of a young girl who um, comes from a family of witches and her best friend is actually non-binary, which I've never actually read a, a knowingly um vocally out if that's the right term i don't think it is um non-binary character it's always been sort of brushed aside if they're not um typical sort of heterosexual bisexual um homosexual characters i've never experienced that kind of thing where somebody's actively went these are my pronouns this is what i am this is who i am this is how i would prefer to be spoken to and i really really like that about this story but yes the the main character's best friend who was also a main character actually um is non-binary and also has the ability to transform into a wolf make of that what you will it's very very interesting it's hard to describe the plot of this but basically the the main character's family sort of protect where they live and their land and things like that um because they're witches if i remember correctly although i don't think that's right but anyway they're protecting their land in this story and there's an instance where um the the white wolf is attack is apparently attacking people or is attacking the land or is a threat to the land and our main character goes out to investigate and finds out that actually it's her best friend and she's just trying to survive. So her best friend is brought into her life. There is a female-female romance in this and it is adorable. As someone who doesn't like graphic novels, I thought it was sweet. I fl flipped through it, read it so, so fast. I did give it three out of five stars and that was because I felt like, for me, graphic novels still feel quite juvenile. Um, it's my own personal preference. I find that they go quite quickly because I feel like I'm reading a children's book, even though they're dealing with very um, serious issues. And in this case, they're tackling serious themes such as um, LGBTQIA+. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And the reason it was three stars is obviously because of what I've just mentioned, but also um, the NetGalley proof was actually unfinished. So it was finished as in the storyline was finished, but the colouring wasn't actually finished in it. The graphics weren't finished in it properly. Um, so halfway through the book, halfway through the, the graphic novel, it just went to the outlines of the drawings and no colour. And I was actually really enjoying the colour. The colour was bringing so much life and presence to it. And I was a little bit gutted that I was missing out on that, um, which knocked it down a little bit. And from what I've heard, that is also the same for the ARC copies from BA and BookCon. So yes, I really, really enjoyed that. It was a lovely little, cutie little story really loved it and gave it three out of five stars then when we actually officially started dark august the first thing i read was the black mage which is a, which is also a graphic novel available now on netgalley if i remember i'll leave the links down below however with this one i did actually give this one star and the reason it wasn't uh, like a zero stars because it wasn't a dig in f i've never actually had to one star a book or a graphic novel that i finished before how do I describe this without being really, really offensive? It's really hard. We follow a young black boy who is the first black boy in this all white magical school. He is in a class full of white people. It's typical in the in the graphics. There is a lot of blonde hair, 
um whiter than white skin and he is obviously standing out as the first black boy and he thinks that what the school's doing is um really good but also really bad at the same time so he feels very much like he is the token black child and his name is token which really really annoyed me that was just one thing that annoyed me then going through this we see him basically trying to fit in at this new school he's struggling to fit in all the kids hate him and he's just he's just struggling to settle basically um all everybody hates him apart from this one girl who basically is trying to be his friend like a little buddy and that's quite cute that's quite nice it's quite sweet and what then happens is basically he kind of gets into trouble but doesn't at the same time because he's being basically set up for loads of things to get him into trouble and the headmaster's like no 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 there's nothing wrong you've done nothing wrong even if he has done something he's not getting wrong for it you know he's being treated with like the utmost respect and everybody's being told to leave him alone all that kind of thing and we then find out that essentially he is the token black child which really 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 annoyed me there was loads of problems with this I don't want to say too much without spoiling it because there are reviews on Goodreads and on NetGalley that have said that they really really enjoyed this and they thought it was really really thought-provoking and re really good story but for me this just was not good I did not enjoy it at all it wasn't because it was the graphic novel I think if it was an actual novel I think I would have flung it across the room and DNF'd it about 20 times before I'd even finished the first chapter um I really didn't like it especially when the main the main negative bad guys in this like the bad the bad guys in this basically um are glorified kkk style characters as in every, the first thing i thought of when i seen these characters pop up was kkk and that's not something that you want to think about because this is supposed to be a young adult slash teen novel you don't want to or a graphic novel sorry you don't want to be thinking oh my goodness this is very very racist i really really didn't like it i thought it was very petty um it made me very angry actually and the reason i finished it is because it was a graphic novel and it was something that was quite quick to read but it just made me angry and upset to think that somebody had took the time to create this novel or create a storyline and then the graphic design to go with it obviously um and managed to get it published it actually really really annoyed me it felt like on the one hand we had mooncakes which is taking so many steps forward or so many steps in the right direction to inclusivity inclusive inclusiveness is that the right word and diversity and all the positive rep which there was so much good rep in that and then you go to the black mage and it's like hello we are 19 whatever america um we would like our racism back please which is basically how it felt to me anyway i mean i might be completely off the mark here but that was my interpretation and i felt so so bad because obviously it was an arc from that galley it's not out until october from what i can tell but i really 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 struggled to get through this without actually um being upset basically but anyway yes didn't enjoy that so that was two reads that i'd read for arc august one i really enjoyed one i didn't and now we're getting on to the physical book that i completed because this black mate the black mate is just making me angry and i've already filmed 10 minutes of footage the book that i read and finished for arc august is sherwood by megan spooner this one is a, a retelling of uh the story of robin hood if maid marion took over robin hood's role and i absolutely love this this one was a solid four out of five stars for me the whole way through this all i could think of when they were talking about um guy gets born sky gets born yeah the sheriff not the sheriff the other guy guy yes guy <laughs> all i could think of was actually um alan rickman because i have seen bits of the the robin hood film with alan rickman in and i my heart my heart was just bleeding for poor guy in this i really really enjoyed this um it is pretty much from what i remember like for like but literally if robin hood wasn't there and it was just marion so i really really enjoyed this so this isn't a spoiler um because it does see it on the back of this book that robin hood is dead we start the book off by finding out that essentially he is dead that is literally what we find out and marion is like oh my god i am so alone she's very much woe is me i'm very very alone i don't know what to do with my life she gets sleeping potions all that sleeping drafts all that kind of thing from um a doctor and a physician that come and visit her and she's very much in a daze and then she she's like i just want to hear his voice one more time and lo and behold she hears his voice 
and for a long time through this book we hear Robin's voice like as a as an, in a conscience format for Marion and I really like that perspective so we follow Marion as she tries to continue what Robin has been doing and what Robin has started which is um, taking from the rich and giving to the poor essentially and it gets to the point where it gets a little bit too much for her um she's taking on too much stories kind of don't line up very well she's trying to hide the fact that she is Marion um and dot actually ends up donning Rob robin's cloak at one point um which sends her on a whole other path and i really really enjoyed this as i said i gave us four out of five stars the storyline was really good the characters were really good at one point i actually wanted to cry at one point i wanted to throw this into the pool on holiday because that's how it was making me feel and i just loved it i honestly put it down and i was like now what do I read? I've brought like five books with me. Now what do I read? Do I read this again? Because I really want to read this again. And it's been such a long time since I've actually wanted to pick up a book and reread it. Um, pretty much as soon as I finished it. I think the last time I did that was probably Harry Potter or the Horse, let's be honest here. I absolutely adored it. And you know what? It's more like a five out of five stars, which says a lot. I'm really, really pleased that I managed to get this one. And I'm going to actually pick up Hunted as well, because just how much I love this and Megan Spooner wrote such good characters and they're all the feels all the feels so we've talked about the books that I have read um these are two that I'm currently in the middle of and then we'll wrap this up so these two I did mention in my arc august one to read so the first one I have here is an illusion of thieves by Kate Glass this is very kindly sent to meet up by Jimmy Lee from Tor so thank you very much Jimmy Lee I really really am enjoying this one I am currently 50-ish pages, 56 pages in and I've been tabbing it and at the top you can see where I've got like little break points for me to, to write my review. There's lots of things um, that actually happen in this first chat, first few chapters that I was just like what on earth is happening but in a good way. So this follows Romy and Neri and Romy has it pretty good for her for herself and for her life in terms of she works as a courtesan for the Lord and basically the Lord bestows his wealth upon all the, the, the people that he feels like bestowing his wealth upon and because he's a courtesan, she's a courtesan for him, this kind of includes her so she has a little bit better than other people until one day her brother Neri is caught thieving in this magical world and they're both castrated essentially. Is castrated the right word? Exiled? I feel like castrated is something else. It's probably something else. It's probably the thing that I'm thinking it is and I'm just wrong. Um, so they're both exiled and Romy has to take full responsibility for Neri and his actions, which means that a lot of responsibility falls on her shoulders. She's back in Beggar's Ring and she just has her wits and her own long hidden sorcery to help her and Neri survive. And a plot is made aware of to overthrow the Shadow Lord and she knows how to stop it. She's the only person that can stop this plan to overthrow the Shadow Lord and to start a civil war. So, so far I am really, really enjoying it. That was probably a really rubbish uh, explanation, but it's really, really good. And it is actually out now, as far as I'm aware. This next one um, that I'm in the middle of reading is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg, 48 pages in. And when I started reading this, I had some issues. So this is kind of like Disneyland with robotic princesses. There's a murder. <laughs> and we don't know who did it. All we know is that everybody suspects our main character, Anna. This is told in several timelines, several plot lines, and I did have some issues with it because they call their creators, or their owners essentially, um, mother and daddy. And one of the lines in this, I was very, very creeped out by and I actually sent a picture of it to my friend and I was like, what the hell am I reading? Why am I reading this? But it has picked up a little bit and I am actually enjoying it a little bit more now. I did read a little bit last night and got to chapter 13, which is the December of the Hyacinth Macaw, 21 months before the trial. And something quite serious happened actually at the back end of one of the last chapters. And I was like, what? Why am I so tired and do I, why do I need to go to sleep now? So I'm looking forward to getting back to this one tonight. So there we have it. That was very, very rambly. I'm sorry. I'm out of practice but there we go that's everything that i've read so far for august and my plans for the rest of the month if you're taking part let me know in the comments down below i would love to have a chat with you i've also got my links down below to all my social media so if you do want to check me out on any of those be my friend on goodreads follow me on instagram all that good stuff those are down there as well and um, i'm trying to be more active on twitter goodreads i'm just pfft, let's forget about that for a while um but i am trying to be more active on twitter and instagram so if you do follow me let me know in the comments down below i'd love to have a chat and i shall speak to you all soon in another video bye